Hi, my name is Tira Wattmoner. It's my pleasure to have a chance to tell you a little bit about my PhD project. The talk today will be entitled Investigating the Role of Theory of Mind on Stress and Adaptive Behavior with VR. This project is supervised by Professor David Rudolph at University of Geneva. Theory of mind is known as an ability to attribute mental states, including beliefs, intention, and desires. This ability constitutes an ability to adapt and predict behavior, so you can understand what other people are thinking and what they will be doing. This is also known as mentalizing and mentalization. The two motivations behind this project. The first one is to characterize theory of mind in more details. We will look at this process as made up of two sub-processes, inferring information and utilizing information. The second goal is to perform a psychosocial study in a more ecological and dynamic but controlled environment. That's why we use virtual reality. The research question is how healthy adults infer and utilize information obtained from interpersonal interaction. We hypothesize that individuals use theory of mind to reduce their stress level in a psychosocial task under uncertainty. And individuals who are better in reducing stress using disability perform better in the task. Here's the design of the task room. In each task room, there will be two elevators. The participant will come to this task room using this elevator, performing the task, and move on to the next trial using this elevator. In each task room, there will be one hostage with a biochemical weapon installed in their body. And this weapon is a time bomb, so the participant will have a limited amount of time to deactivate the bomb. To activate the bomb, the participant has to press one of these two identical buttons. One of them is a diffuser, the other one is a detonator. If the participant press on a detonator, the participant will activate the bomb on the hostage and kill the hostage. Around the detonator, there is also an acceleration zone. If the participant or the hostage steps inside this zone, they are going to activate this zone and make the time acceleration goes faster, and that will kill the hostage faster. Behind these two buttons, there are two exits. Where, uh, this, the, uh, the hostage will use one of these exits to go out of this facility. Because it's a time bomb, so here's a timer when the participant can see how much time they have left. To help the participant identify the location of the diffuser, they will have to chant, uh, a chance to get some information from civilian cameras in the task room, showing what's going on in the task room that they're about to enter. What they will see inside the elevator are two screens. These two screens show the same footage, but different focusing powers. This one will be focusing on the avatar's the hostage body, so the participant can interpret or infer what their mental states are. For the right one would be the global projection, so the participant can see from themselves the signal, which will be given by a scientist character. Uh, for example, this one, the red light signal, is given to the left button that indicates that this one is a detonator then the participant has to avoid going to this one uh, we use red light to indicate danger to indicate the not go there please don't go there and this design will allow us to observe behavior of the participant in six different conditions See, this six different condition is made up in a factorial design using the uh, two parameters. The first parameter is the hostage belief. Second one is the participant's belief. The hostage can have true belief, false belief, or no belief, meaning no information about the diffuser. The participant can have true belief, no information. Here is the first example. When the participant has a true belief, but the hostage has no belief about the position of the front view, in the left side of the screen, you will see that the hostage is turning her back to the room, so she doesn't see the signal given behind her, and it's changed from here to here. After that, the participant has to rate their uh, confidence about 
the position of the diffuser and whether the hostage know about the diffuser and their stress level of accomplishing the task. So after getting this information, the, the participant knows uh, which one to go to. So she went to this one and she accomplished in this trial. So now she moved on to, to the next trial using the elevator. The second scenario would be when the has mean because the hostage has a fault belief. You can see that the hostage first saw the signal here and then she turned her back to the room. The signal moved to this one, but she didn't know. Then again, the participant had to rate their confidence about this position, very confident, 7. For the hostage, maybe not, 4. That stress level increased a little bit. So let's uh, see how she does. She tried to intervene to change the course, but it was too late because the sign was up before she arrived at the diffuser. The protocol will give us multiple types of data that I don't have time to talk about today. If you're interested, we can discuss later. Thank you very much for your attention. And I would like to also thank the organizer for giving me a chance to present to you today my project. I hope to see some of you in Lausanne very soon. Have a good day. Bye.